Can you really succeed in this country as an immigrant? Well, you will know the answer very clearly by the end of the show. Hi, welcome to You Belong Here, the place to be for positive stories of immigrant women from all around the world. I am Portia Chan Soverberg. I was made in Taiwan. This show is brought to you by the You Belong Here Foundation, a multimedia social enterprise that nurtures a community of immigrant sheroes and their allies. You are about to hear from inspiring women sharing their successes, challenges, and how they are living meaningful American dreams. Stay a while to pick up some useful tips on how you can live your own American dream. Today, you will meet Noni Allwood and Jackie Schulerman. Noni is a courageous advocate and champion to women and Latinos. Trained as an engineer and after years in corporate executive roles, she now dedicates her life to research, speaking, advocacy, and consulting. Noni came from El Salvador. Jackie is a top producing real estate broker and recognized as a leader in her field. She grew up in Iran. Jackie holds both a degree in architecture and a degree in business finance. She makes concerted effort to give back to her community by actively participating in local charitable organizations. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you here, both of you. Wow, you have both accomplished so much, overcome so many obstacles, and I can't wait to hear your stories and really for our viewers to hear how one could succeed even if you have very little resources very few contacts and didn't know anything about the american culture in your case noni i know you said you spoke english when you came from el salvador so you were in your 20s single mom yes and because you spoke english didn't you say people kind of just assumed you knew the culture and thought you had it all figured out, but that really wasn't the case? Well, it was funny because it works both ways. Uh, people felt that I could understand humor, which is very, very hard to pick up. As mm. you know, humor is the last thing you pick up from a culture. That's true. On the other hand, I had an accent, and that distanced me, and unfortunately, there's such a bias around accents mm. that mine was the accent that is not seen very favorably. So I was always questioned as an engineer whether I had the credentials and I had the, the mm. experience to be credible and be reliable. Wow, interesting. So it worked both ways. It, yeah, yeah, that's true. It does work both ways. What about you, Jackie? You were a young person when you came. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> Not quite young. I was 19, okay. so I came to go to the university to get my degree in architecture. And uh, it was, uh, it was, tough. At that time, I was so young that I didn't know that being the female in the world of architecture was mm. going to be difficult. And I assumed that there were lots of them there. But quickly, I found out that I was only the second woman in the entire school of architecture. What? Yeah, wow. so that was interesting. It, it has pros and cons. So I was getting True. good attention from the guys, <laughs> but at the same time, I, I didn't have many female friends. Mm. Um, and then getting into the workforce in the architecture and construction, again, I was dealing with the same thing. Being a female, you weren't taken seriously. Mm. Um, like Noni said, having an accent, they assume that perhaps you're not smart enough and but what I realized very quickly that there were going to be some setbacks there were going to be challenges and I just trained my mind to have that mindset that I'm going to march forward mm. wow I, I think 
the accent issue is actually a very real issue. Correct. And uh, we've spoken before that, uh, I hate to say it, but we all know there are some accents that are more preferred or sure. um, even yeah. coveted, right, than yeah. the other accents. Yeah. And the, the real, it's a very real bias that some people have on accents. So, but both of you have succeeded regardless. And both of you are not apologetic that you have an accent because that's who you are, that's who I am. So for other immigrants, and I know I've spoken with a lot of immigrant women actually who have really been hesitant to step up to a leadership role because they said, well, I have an accent. So they, they become very shy or pulled away from being at the table because they don't feel that they have the right to be there simply because they have an accent, even though they're completely brilliant. Mm -hmm. So what would you advise to, to these immigrants who still may not be as comfortable with having their accent? You know, Portia, something magical happened the day I realized that my accent wasn't going away <laughs> and I decided to make peace with it mm -hmm. and realized that I could focus on spelling and my grammar and the mm -hmm. way I spoke and the way I used my, my, my hands to express things and the way I put my thoughts together because the accent wasn't going to happen. And the moment I dropped that burden that I was placing mm. on myself, then something magical happened, um, which is I became non-apologetic about it. Mm. And then- It's all in your attitude, It's all right? in your attitude, but mm. it's, it's easier said than done. Yes, it mm -hmm. is, yes it is. What about you, Jackie? Well, um, as I get uh, older, I realize that, like Noni said, the accent is not going to go away. <laughs> it's going to be there. Right. So you might as well live with it and try to uh, learn, speak more of a uh, fluent and high level and uh, be articulate. Um, and uh, just uh, that's really all I can tell you. Mm. I, I think older I get, uh, it's not bothering me as much as it mm -hmm. used to do when I was younger. Yeah, there is something about aging and having more <laughs> maturity, right? Supposedly, we, <laughs> we get well, that. Well, huh? the other thing, Portia, is I think we need to remember all the time that the reason we have an accent is because we speak two languages, That's not right. one. Beautiful, so, exactly. As opposed to saying, oh, I'm shrinking because I speak with that. No, you celebrate it. You speak two languages. Exactly, exactly. I do. I remember thinking that when I was younger, thinking, you know, yes, I may have an accent, but you know what? I speak Chinese mm -hmm. fluently. Yeah. I don't know if you can speak Chinese <laughs> and if you can pick up Chinese like I yeah. did English, right? right? So That's true. you're right. It is owning it, be proud, and having that positive attitude too, right? right? That is correct. Yeah. I understand now that I'm getting more attention because when I call my clients or prospective clients, um, the accent actually plays part of it because they huh. say, hmm, I remember you. And it sort of makes me um, stand out to a certain degree wow, because interesting. Uh, you don't get lost or you, you're not forgotten. When they hear mm. the same accent uh, over and over, um, it uh, creates that identity that mm. I've been looking for. So uh, now I'm basically, um, pretty proud that I have the <laughs> accent and yeah. to use it on a positive ma matter. Wow, that's interesting. So branding, branding. Uh, which is now so huge. Everywhere you turn around, you, there's something, a video or a story about branding. and Authenticity, authenticity. that's the big word. Mm, very Showing nice. up authentically. Mm -hmm. And that's it's right. part of who you are, you need to embrace it and you celebrate it. So we have two tips already. Have a positive attitude, right? and really be proud of who we are, the way we are, and being authentic. That's awesome. Are there other tips while we're here that you may have to offer to immigrants who are still um, trying to crack the code and feeling a sense of belonging and really assimilating and being an American? You know, the, the one thing I would say, and, and I published some research around Latinos, that's the area that I work mostly with, is. Uh, most 76% Lati of Latinos cover some parts of their identity when they don't feel it's safe. 
So Ricardo's will come yeah. Ricky's, Carlos will come Charlie's, or oh. you will stop speaking your native language, you will stop associating mm. and covering, not being friends with other Latinos. Wow. So there's this, this way, it, and it's this also the pressure, the tradition that we've had to integrate and assimilate. Mm. So drop, in, drop who you were and become this new way. Right. And I think that that's a huge loss, mm -hmm. not only for us, which we're sacrificing and living somebody else's identity, but also for this country. Mm. Because this country has grown to be what it is thanks to the richness that our culture brings. So my other tip would be celebrate your culture. Bring it on. Mm. Bring it on to wherever you go. Talk about how you got here. Talk about your traditions. Nice. Do, because at the end of the day, people will know I'm Latina. And, and, <laughs> right. Right? So, right. So I might as well just use that to my advantage and right. celebrate who I am and celebrate. the culture that I came from. Another great tip. Celebrate who you are. Celebrate who we are. What, what about you, Jackie? Um, I, I pretty much uh, agree with what Noni said. Mm -hmm. Celebrate who you are and, and be proud of where you came from and where you're going. Because sometimes people do forget where they came from. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and it's an unfortunate thing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Realize you had a really good time where you grew up mm -hmm. and you're having embracing what the future has to offer. And, uh, and, and be proud of your back, background and what you're heading forward for. So what do you say to people, and, and I said this to you before the show started, that I think Americans, most Americans are just the most amazing, generous, kind-hearted, wonderful people. That's been my experience. And I know, though, in the last few years, my sense of security have actually been threatened a little bit for me and I find that shocking I've been here for 42 years or I don't know 40 some years I've always felt like I belonged so what do you say to people who are now starting to feel like the I don't know the media perhaps or you know people that they have in their life are starting to be maybe a little bit more hostile or there's more negative narrative out there, what would you say to them and how, how would you combat that? Well, that's a difficult one because I think we're all trying to figure it out as we go. Mm -hmm. I've never seen things to be this complicated for mm -hmm. immigrants as I see it now and the stereotypes and the, uh, the negative stereotypes showing up in such a strong way and being played out by politicians right. um, to their favor to instill fear in wonderful U.S. citizens that know that don't know what it's like, mm -hmm. what brought us here. Mm -hmm. Immigrants don't come here to take advantage of the system. They come here to work mm -hmm. and make a life and contribute. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the story that's being forgotten right now in, in the narrative. I, we, you know, I have, as an immigrant, I have contributed to this country equally or perhaps more with my volunteering hours and mm -hmm. my my caring for the community and mm. my caring for others that um, that that can take advantage of my privilege mm. in a way that um, perhaps others don't, and I'm very proud of that. I'm only going to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you find that having having participated with your local community and doing civic service? I know you've you've done a lot of volunteering too, Jackie. Do you find that doing so really helped? with your sense of belonging? Sure, absolutely. And um, as I have to echo what you said, in my field, I work with all nationalities from mm. all over the world. And I have to say that Americans are the best and the nicest and the easiest people mm. to work with. Mm. And I absolutely love Americans. And I love being here. Uh, and I really take it very seriously of living and the opportunities that mm -hmm. this country has provided for me. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there are going to be noises all the time. Mm. And uh, mm. my thought is that uh, just stay focused, know what your mission is, what you're going to accomplish, and forget about the rest of it. And um, that's really all I do. I mean, I try not to really listen to too much of the news and mm -hmm. the negative news yep. because it really irritates me. 
and uh, so I, uh, I, I and I read only the news or the the articles that it's positive and it's going to help me to stay positive. Mm -hmm. Well, good then. You can catch more of this show. Then. <laughs> yes. That's what this is about, right? I, I also I actually think also that I um, I need to remember every single day I get out out of bed that I am privileged, mm -hmm. yeah. and that I need to share that privilege with those that don't have it. Mm -hmm. And I don't have my privilege all the time, mm -hmm. but when I do have it, I need to put it to good use. And I think that's the secret. It's not a it's not there's nothing wrong with having privilege. The question is, no, what are you going to do all. with it? Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. the big question. So that's as long as I keep putting my privilege to use, I think mm. I'm going to be okay. That's nice. I, I just recently read a quote. I don't remember who said it, but she said, if your dream includes only you, then it's too small. Mm -hmm. So I feel like right now is actually that time for all of us to step up. Right. Right? And exactly. I think... Another thing I've heard is someone say, well, if you're not at the table, then you're on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Right? That's a good one. Wow. Yeah. I was like, that's interesting. So I feel like leadership, we've talked about this briefly, Noni, that I feel that um, all these things you have both shared already, being positive, having this positive attitude, being authentic, celebrate who you are, and pay attention to your branding. I feel like Every, not every immigrant has perhaps the immigrant mindset, but I know all successful immigrants have this immigrant mindset, which are a set of qualities, I find. You know, the qualities that took you from a young 19-year-old uh, going to college in Texas who didn't know anyone <laughs> except for her brother and still just had to learn everything from scratch to who you are today. Sure. It's a, success, a successful realtor in Palo Alto, California. Wow. And you, Noni, you came as a single mom in your 20s, and you had to navigate everything by yourself. You did not have a support system. No, what not so at all. Ever. And here you are, <laughs> right? You have your privilege. You are proud Latina. You are a proud community member and a leader. There are qualities that I know both of you have that really helped you become who you are today. So I'd love to talk a little bit about those qualities, right? I mean, so. Yes, you know, the, the, what we tend to forget is that immigrants have superpowers, mm. what I call superpowers, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the, the experience of immigration builds skills that you don't even recognize, which is things like problem solving, incredible mm -hmm. skills to problem solve, right. build community, a teamwork and collaboration, of course, uh, adaptability. Yes. We don't question, we just survive to the next situation, right, Jackie? It's right. the same, right. the next situation. Yeah. Cross-cultural communications, we know how to speak to people from other cultures because we already come from other cultures. Right. And right. so we have these these attributes that are never persistence, really persistence yeah, right? and the perseverance, and, yeah. and the and the attitudes towards risk. Once you leave your mm. country, it's such a dramatic risk that you're taking, no matter yeah. how you come. It is. Um, so you you you've moved your tolerance for risk to a new level. Mm, definitely risk taking, huh? Mm. That's why I think so many immigrants are entrepreneurs. Correct. Correct. Well, some of them really had no choice; they couldn't find a job, so they basically had to become an entrepreneur. Although there are plenty of people who are native born who are not entrepreneurs, and maybe they're looking for opportunities too. So I think risk taking is definitely part of that, yeah. right? Well, part of also immigrating from another country to, mm -hmm. uh, to another country, or in my situation from Iran to uh, US, is that I've seen the other side. Mm. I'm not saying the other side was bad. From my perspective, was very good. I was with my family and was well taken care of. And when I came here, I quickly realized that I'm on my own. And mm. I better grow up very quickly and be responsible. And there are situations that I could have easily gone a wrong way and found in a wrong path. Um, and I look back and I say, oh, wow, how did I do it? Mm. Um, but the life throws curveballs at you 
every single day. Even now, I get curveballs thrown at sure. me every single day. So you just have to navigate through it. And, uh, you know, seeing the other side and seeing the opportunities that is in front of you, and mm -hmm. all you have to do is stay focused, work hard, mm. anything is possible. What else can I ask for? It's mm. a wonderful place to be. Stay focused. I think that's really important, right? And showing up. Yeah, showing wouldn't up. Wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Just really show up, even though you don't feel like it or you're scared, but you, you do it anyway. Yeah. Right? And speaking of Iran, I know, Noni, you've been to Iran recently. Yes. And, but <laughs> She's got more information than I do. <laughs> I, I <laughs> more know. recent information. You need to come to El Salvador next, <laughs> yeah. Jackie. There you go. We'll organize the trip. Now, you haven't been back in I have not. 40 years? 46 years wow. now. Wow. I'm waiting for my 50th year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay, great. So you really are such an American, wouldn't you say? Um, yeah, but again, as I mentioned, I don't forget where I came from. Mm. It's always in back of my mind. Mm -hmm. I know who I was, where I came from, and where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always tell everyone. Mm -hmm. Stay focused. Don't lose your identity because some people do lose their identity. Yes, yes, that's yeah. true. I know I've spoken with some second generation children of immigrants or even immigrants who came when they were very young that they don't know how to speak their native language because their parents wanted them to learn how to speak English. Correct. And so they really didn't get a chance to, to learn it, which I think is really a shame, but completely understandable from their parents' perspective, right? There's a, there's a writer, his name is De La Riva, I can't remember his first name, but he talks about the immigrant being the transmitter of culture mm. because they come and they tell you, this is how we did it in my country, this is how you're doing it here. They explain to you how it happened in your native country, uh, in their native country. The children of immigrants are called the transmitters of culture. I'm sorry, the interpreters of culture because uh. they can see, this is how we do it at home, uh -huh. the Salvadorian uh -huh. way, and this is how society does it. And the grandchildren are the redeemers of culture. Oh, wow. So they, w they just take the culture and they pick and choose whatever they want. Huh. So, so the, generational, the generations matter a lot when it comes to the experience of the immigrant. But in and around the Redeemers, it's very diluted. But the immigrant and their children really, and they struggle with that. The children of immigrants struggle with that identity. They do. They do. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's so interesting. We'll have to learn more about the research and yes it, it's it's fascinating because then you can start thinking wow no wonder it was so hard for my daughter for instance mm -hmm. she did speak spanish but she spoke with an accent and so they feel caught right right not not um not hispanic enough and not american not american, enough. american enough yeah right i've heard that before yeah. and for the parents is is a little crazy as well Portia. i don't know your experience with your children but <laughs> You're trying to raise children. I was trying to raise her the Salvadorian way, and she was mm. going like, no, we're not there. Yeah, we're no, here. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> my, I don't have any children, but uh, my sisters have the same experience with mm. their daughters and primarily daughters rather than the sons, and mm. uh, that they kept questioning that oh, you know, really? this is a U.S. It's not... Mm where you came from and it was it, it's it's a difficult situation for yeah. the parents because yes. they want to raise them the the, um, the old-fashioned way right. and then right. here we are in the u.s and uh, I, I would say that's probably a pretty difficult balancing act mm. that a mom from any other country raising their kids here in the united states they go through and i really admire the parents um, you know, walking their parent, their kids through this whole maze. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that reminds me when I was raising my kids when they were younger. I think another immigrant superpower or mindset is frugality, mm -hmm. right? As an immigrant, yes, I know I don't take anything for granted. I'm a total utilitarian. I want to reuse, repurpose, recycle. Yeah. And my children are not quite the same, yeah. right? Yeah. So I find that was kind of interesting. But I, the immigrants that I have met, it's very most true. of them are very uh, frugal. Yes. Or just, you know, we don't take anything for granted. That's right. We're resourceful, mm -hmm. and we also appreciate resources, right? Mm -hmm. So 
if you were to meet your, if you had a time machine, you can go meet your younger self. What, what would you offer to your younger self? Oh my goodness. Um, the authenticity question. Don't, qu okay. don't question who you are. Mm. You show up like you need to. It's hard. It's easier said than done, but okay. I would have told myself, don't be, don't try to be someone you're not because it was too hard. Mm. Okay. Jackie? For me, uh, I would have gone into entrepreneurship much earlier than what I did. Ah. I was hiding myself in that corporate environment of mm. uh, security, the job securities, and but there was a glass ceiling, and mm. I could see that very clearly that wow. there was no way for me to go there. But again, the financial security part of it was keeping me from yes. taking that leap. And right. it had some downsizing in the corporation that sort of forced me out of get out of that environment and really explore who I am and my entrepreneurship. It was a very difficult task and a very difficult journey. Many days and evenings of crying my mm -hmm. heart out mm -hmm. uh, that I, uh, you know, work for these corporations for so long and I put everything in my soul and my heart mm. into the corporation and the corporation are downsizing and as a result of that I had to be um, move on mm. and but I look back and I said I am so glad <laughs> those days happened because it really forced me to come out of my shell mm. and pull that entrepreneurship out of me and now I wouldn't even think twice to go work for a corporation because wow. I know what I'm capable of and I know where I'm going mm -hmm. and it's a hard work mm -hmm. but anything is possible nice that's really nice. We, and you, we didn't get a chance to talk about your stories of uh, being in corporations because I know you have a There's whole a lot, lot of them. Yes. <laughs> well, perhaps we'll uh, do another show, uh, do a podcast and recapture that. So a new tradition I'm starting on the show is I would love for you to complete this sentence. Mm -hmm. And the sentence will start with only an immigrant woman dot, dot, dot. Only an immigrant woman would know how to build, how to bring their, their, their culture and their, and their traditions to the home and the workplace. Mm -hmm. I think the women have this incredible ability to not only value, but also tell the stories mm -hmm. and, bring you, and bring it to life. And I think that immigrant women, if they tell their stories, I think they would help create a different perception and a different story what it what immigrants are all about great and you I go back to again the obstacles that it's going to be only on, an immigrant woman uh, knows how to navigate through all the curveballs and obstacles that it's going to be in your way and then work mm -hmm. around it and um, if I have to say also balancing the the act of raising your children here mm. in the in the US. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank I Thank you. I feel like I want to sit here much longer to pull more wisdom out of you. And now Noni, Jackie and I would love to hear from you. We talked about so many interesting things. I'm curious, what's one thing that resonated with you? Please leave a comment. You Belong Here Foundation is committed to bring a plethora of positive stories of immigrants to the community and ignite community conversations. Tonight's show comes to you from Palo Alto, California. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, you deserve to be seen, be heard, and belong. You belong here. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're done? Asian, yeah. European, or American. Whether you pray to God or atheist is irrelevant. Because what you got inside is the same as all your pleasure. Now, it'll change your heart. It'll change your mind. And then you'll start to change. So your love. in the
troubled in the homeless can you say everywhere you are is where your home is sharing your heart in the dark just like a lotus letting your light shine bright so you can